Happy Valentine's Day and welcome to this episode of the Arts Overlook. I'm your host, Chris Bowden. Each episode highlights the arts and entertainment of the Cedar Valley. In this episode, we'll be taking a look at some of the more traditional forms of art in American culture. First, we'll head to the Grout Museum for their annual quilting exhibit. Second, we'll stop in at Critchett's Lowry Organ Center in Cedar Falls. And third, we'll sit down and maybe even be serenaded by a local barbershop quartet. This edition of the Arts Overlook starts right now. Art is thriving in the Cedar Valley. It's everywhere. But if you don't know where to look, you could miss it. This is your local arts perspective. This is the Arts Overlook. The Grout Museum has always been one of the staples of the Waterloo community. Throughout the year, they present a wide array of exhibits for members of the Cedar Valley to stop in and enjoy. And one exhibit in particular keeps making its way back year after year. Together, we'll take an inside look at this year's quilting exhibit, What's in a Name? The Soul of a Quilt. Since its construction in 1956, the Grout Museum of Waterloo has offered a plethora of exhibits showcasing anything from local area history to planetarium shows. And for 23 years, the museum has been offering an exhibit on quilting in the Cedar Valley. This year's exhibit gives people the opportunity to look at the inspiration and design behind various quilts and the origin of their names. The exhibit's called What's in a Name? The Soul of a Quilt. And basically when we thought of doing this, um, quilts, quilts have a lot of names. You know, people will design a quilt, stitch a quilt together, and they'll say, look, this is my spool block quilt, or this is my women of the Bible quilt, and well, what did you mean by that? How did you come up with that name? And sometimes the names come from um, patterns that have, you know, commercial patterns that are out there, or books, or maybe patterns from a newspaper or even patterns that are exchanged among friends. And that's how quilts get their names that way. And sometimes people just say, you know, my husband's a carpenter. I'd like to make him a carpenter's wheel. Or I, he works on cars. I, I think I'll make him a monkey wrench. So many of these patterns out there, they have more than one name attached to them. Monkey wrench, for example, can also be called hole in the barn door, churn dash, and there's several other names out there for it. And so people will name their quilts according to how they relate to the name, or it, it could even be something as simple as the part of the country that you're living in or, or the time frame that the quilt is made in. And there are patterns that have been around for, you know, years, 100 years and, or, or more that, that have these names attached to them. And people are familiar with the pattern and the names and, and sometimes they make those patterns because they like the symbolism to them and, and they can relate to those. So that's when, when we decided to do this exhibit, we wanted to explore all those possibilities and that's, that's what you see when you see the exhibit. Quilting has always been one of the country's most popular hobbies and is rooted in our American culture. Because of its long-standing tradition, it's likely you have some sort of connection to the world of quilting. Quilts are warm and comforting, and quilts have a lot of memories in them. And as I was explaining with the names, you know, that can be part of the memory, but also the fabrics that you use in a quilt can, that you use in quilts can also be fabric that came from um, uh, your mother's dress or your little girl's shorts that she wore one summer or something and and you can you know use that fabric um, to also help tell the stories or or fabrics that have special meanings like at the um, turn of the century there was special fabric that came out that signified you know the the century turning over and stuff and so quilters were using that fabric to make to make their quilts so Quilts a lot of times will tell stories about the time and the place where that quilt was made. And I, I know a lot of quilters that, you know, they make these quilts knowing darn well that, you know, a hundred years from now those quilts will still be here. And it's something that they can leave behind and leave to, um, you know, relatives or people and give away. A lot of times if quilts have been handed down in a family, it'll be my, my mother, Addie Jones Smith made this, or my great-grandmother made this quilt, 
and she came from New York in a covered wagon here, and then she went in a covered wagon out to California. She had 13 kids and blah, blah, blah. So you, you hear all these stories about what she did. And she made this wonderful masterpiece or this wonderful quilt that's been handed down from family member to family member. And you get a little bit of that person's life and story out of, out of a quilt. So that's, that's one of the reasons that I like to do quilt exhibits is because it gives, gives us that opportunity to tell stories that might otherwise be forgotten. And, the, and there's stories of the common person too a lot of times. Throughout the exhibit, it's clear that there's more to these quilts than meets the eye. Not only are quilters building something comfortable, they're building a story through the fabric and patterns they design. When a quilter makes a quilt, a lot of thought goes into it. Some, sometimes people will, like I said, will just go buy a commercial pattern or they'll buy a kit and they'll make it as it is. But I, quilters usually go a little bit deeper into that if they're really putting their heart and soul into it. They decide the pattern and, and the reason behind that pattern. They'll think very hard and long about the colors. And then they'll look at the fabrics. And a lot of times if you look at the quilts, you'll see stripes and plaids or floral prints, geometric prints. And they'll be large and small sizes just within the fabric pieces themselves. And that has a lot to do with it because you don't want a bunch of little pieces or fabric that looks real similar, it just gets mushy. So, and, and even colors, sometimes you'll, you'll, look at a, you'll look at a quilt and you'll go, God, that's really beautiful. And then you start looking at the individual colors and you'll think, that's the ugliest color in the world, but it works. And that's just what's so neat about quilting is you can put all this stuff together. And if you really look at a painting and tear things apart that way too, you'll notice a lot of stuff that individually it's not really beautiful, but as a whole, it's wonderful. So once they do that, they piece their blocks so quilts are made up of blocks, a lot of them. The majority of them are made up of blocks. And they piece the blocks together. Then you can also decide how it is you're going to arrange those blocks. And it kind of says a lot about the person that makes them and, and how they go about constructing in a, a quilt or whatever. Then once the quilt top is together and they have the final borders on, they have to decide how they're going to quilt it. So quilts are made up of three layers, the top, the back, and then there's a middle layer batting, usually batting, that gives it its warmth and fluff and everything. And you have to hold those layers together, and sometimes you can tie them together, in which case then it's a comforter, or you can quilt them together with stitches. So if, even if you look at the quilting stitches themselves, you see a lot of design in that. You'll see feathers or um, lines or things they call clamshells, waves, um, chains. There's a lot of different quilting stitches that often for some quilters also carry symbolism. And then the final step you do is put the binding on, label the back of the quilt, which <laughs> everybody that's kind of like the last thing and hopefully they, you know, label their quilts and then they're done and then they display them, and how they display them is another whole subject line. With so many possible designs, stitching, fabric, and details, the possibilities are endless. This variety truly offers something for everyone. Everybody can relate to a quilt, and we, we see that a lot of times when people come into the exhibits. It doesn't matter who you are. You can look at a quilt and you'll say, oh yes, my grandmother used to do that, or, or my aunt, gave me a quilt once and you know so there there's just a lot of that kind of thing that it evokes memories and just good feelings because of the storytelling and emotional investment that can go into building a quilt this art is able to bring people together to share their experiences fabrics patterns and stories with that sense of community in mind, the Grout Museum offers quilting retreats throughout the year to anyone who may be interested this is actually um, our, our 12th year in a row of doing a retreat. We've done other quilt retreats with in the last 20 some years that we've had quilt exhibits, but we've, we've done one every year for 12 years and people bring all their stuff in and all their, to do a finish it project, to finish something that's just been gnawing at them. 
And a lot of times if you sit at home to work on that, there's all this other stuff that gnaws at you too. So being able to get away and to sit and focus on one thing and work on it is, is a wonderful thing. And um, so they, they come for the sharing and, and just to be together and socialize and to get their work done. And it's, it, it really is a, a lot of fun. We enjoy hosting these events and they enjoy coming and being part of it. The art of quilting continues to live and thrive here in the Cedar Valley, and the Grout Museum encourages you to come in and check out some of the local talent, stories, and history hiding in your own backyard. I'm still not sure how to quilt yet, but it was great taking the time to stop in and learn more about an art that's near and dear to so many people. If you'd like to see the exhibit for yourself, it will continue to be on display until March 14th. For hours, more information, and tickets, you can check out the Grout Museum's website at www.groutmuseumdistrict.org. Organs. For some, people immediately think of a stomach or heart. Others may think of a large, sprawling pipe organ in a church, but for some in the Cedar Valley, it means community, relaxation, and plenty of laughs. Since 1971, Critchett's Lowry Organ Center has been teaching adults how to play musical organ instruments in the Cedar Falls and Waterloo area. Here is a glimpse at their center, lessons, and how you may be able to learn a new hobby for yourself. If you're ever out driving through the south end of Cedar Falls Industrial Park, you may come across Critchett's Lowry Organ Center hiding next door to the Pipac Center. Offering a wide variety of keyboard instruments and lessons, the center serves as a welcoming and friendly place for adults to engage in music. We teach adults how to play the organ and the keyboard here. And it's really cool because they come in sometimes with absolutely no prior experience and they're playing a song the first week before they leave the store that very first week. Critchett's began in 1923 and is now a fourth generation family owned business. Beginning by selling upright pianos to farms out of the back of their wagon, they now own five centers in Iowa and Nebraska that offer classes throughout the year. We have classes here on Mondays and Tuesdays. The Cedar Falls store is open on Mondays, Tuesdays and Fridays. And you might have seen Eddie. Eddie's our little dog and our mascot. And he comes to work with me on Mondays, Tuesdays, and Fridays. Uh, we have beginning classes. We have classes that persons have been with us from the start. It starts with a book that looks like this. So this is the original Lowry magic book. And if you know your colors, what your main chords are the C, the F, and G. You can play them with one finger in the left hand. They play the complete chord. They play the foot pedals for you. And then you have your notes on the staff. And it goes across like this. This is the treble clef. So everything following is your right hand on the upper keyboard. And the names of the notes appear directly on the notes. And since we are adults that take this class, the notes are larger and easier to read. Uh, there's new concepts. Every week we add something new to it. Um, there's songs that Lowry knows that we all know. It appeals to our generations. So a lot of the songs are polkas, waltzes, marches, big band, foxtrots, uh, Latin music. So Dixieland, all ragtime, all different sorts of music. And it's cool because as adults, we don't have to want to wait 20 years before we're playing our first song. So the helps on the instruments and with, uh, we kind of say it's the hardware and the software that goes together so that you're playing right away and you get that, uh, that feeling of accomplishment and kind of as adults, we want to know everything right now. We don't have to wait for it. So this allows us to accomplish that. I saw this advertised on TV about that time. Uh, Pam was on and they were advertising uh, group lessons at Lowry, which at that time was Black Hawk Village. And, uh, but I didn't go over. And then from our annual trek to the State Fair, I was in Varied Industries building and I saw Pam there and I didn't even know she was from Cedar Falls. And I asked her about these lessons and so she introduced herself and so I started coming and then 
Before long, I, I traded for the first Maui organ. From the first step in the door, it's clear that Critchett's is centered on providing a close-knit community for people with a variety of backgrounds and experience to come together and learn while building plenty of memories. We do see each other every week for classes. Uh, each class lasts one hour and we meet once a week. But um, you might have noticed that if class is at 10.30, um, maybe people start coming in, in around 9.30. <laughs> so that way they get their time together and they're building friendships. And it's the same with me. It's like we're, we're a family. There was a whole group that left here and they were all going to lunch together. <laughs> and we do so many other neat things. Uh, the best people in the world come through these doors. Uh, we have all kinds of professionals. Uh, I have nurses, I have doctors, I have sheriffs, bartenders, we've got teachers, we've got all kinds of uh, persons from all professions. And uh, everybody enjoys what they're doing here. Uh, so many times teaching children, they're forced to come to classes to learn. And uh, this is not that way. The persons that come here have always wanted to learn how to play. Maybe they were in the Depression. Uh, maybe they were busy raising their families, uh, out doing their jobs, never had the opportunity to come here. And now it's their time, their opportunity, and they're coming to take lessons and fulfilling a dream for themselves. To sit down and be able to play music. Uh, I come from a musical family. Uh, my mother, and a brother and a sister all graduated in piano. Two from Drake, one from the University of Iowa. Um, I was a little guy that wouldn't uh, practice when I was little. I think mom finally, who taught music lessons for piano lessons for 65 years, she gave up on me about uh, third grade, I think. She would set me down and go out to the kitchen and say, now you practice. And the minute she was out in the kitchen, I'd take out the front door over to the park and play football. So I wished, uh, looking back, that I had stayed and practiced. Not only does the center provide community, but the music skills students learn provide a variety of health benefits along the way. The benefits are tremendous. They've done lots and lots of studies, so there's lots of medical benefits that have been found and proven. Uh, they found that it decreases anxiety. Uh, it also increases, increases your HGH, uh, the human growth hormone that helps keep you young. Uh, it's found to ward off dementia and Alzheimer's. Just does so many great things. Improves your self-confidence. It improves the hand-to-eye coordination. Um, just wonderful, wonderful benefits. It's a very good way to relax, both here with friends and at home. Ruth and I uh, both enjoy it very much. And there's some days where you kind of have to wait for the other one to get off of the organ so that you can try to get your share. The members of Critchett's also have the opportunity to spend time together while performing in the community at various events and special occasions. They even take trips to learn more about the world of organ playing across the country. We get together for concerts, for workshops. We bring Lowry artists in that come and play for us. Uh, every year we go to Lake Panorama and have four day extravaganza where artists come, we do workshops, uh, we eat, there's tons of food, more food, more food. There's dancing, there's singing. Uh, there's uh, after hours rooms where, you know, somebody sits and plays an instrument and everybody gathers around and just lots of camaraderie. We do go out together and we play for different um, occasions. We've played for farmers markets. Uh, we played this year for the Mike and Leona Adams uh, Thanksgiving dinner, which was at the local union hall here and they served approximately 1,100 persons that weren't able to have a Thanksgiving meal. So we brought an organ, and about 12 and up to 20 of the students here will come and play for it and entertain. Um, we played for retirement centers and nursing homes. 
So it's a, it's a community arrangement also where we give back to, um, to others by our play. After 10 years at their new location in Cedar Falls, Critchett's Lowry Organ Center is continuing to provide a great way for adults to learn a new hobby while engaging in a fun and healthy community right here in the Cedar Valley. New students are always welcome with new class opportunities starting soon. We are starting a new class and our new class will begin on Tuesday, March 10th at 2 o'clock in the afternoon. So anyone that would uh, enjoy being part of our group and learning how to play or taking your hobby to the next level, uh, please join us. We have a great time. We laugh, we sing, we uh, Oh, there's been dancing in here before, <laughs> things like that, but we, we have a great time. We do these little extra fun things like artists performing. Uh, we're even thinking about going to Lowry Factory this summer, and that's in Chicago. These are um, made here in the United States, and the factory is, the world headquarters is in Chicago, so we'll be visiting there. So we do lots of lots of fun things. Over the years, you know, 14 years of, of meeting new people, and, and you really develop some very nice friendships with all with people. Um, we're a jovial, jovial group. Sometimes it gets even a little wild around here, just <laughs> laughing and some funny things that happen. But it's a relaxing time, you know. That that helps with tension. See. As we get older, everybody has tensions, but sometimes, you know, you develop other worries. Uh, a session out here or a session on the organ really helps that. Uh, I, I tell mom, Ruth, that, well, I'm gonna play the organ for about half an hour. Well, it's probably gonna be an hour and a half because you just get carried away with it. You, you start in a book and then you, Oh, there's another one. I want to play that song too. And after a while, you think, "Gee, I didn't have dinner. It's one o'clock in the afternoon." So <laughs> it happened, and 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 everybody here will tell you that. Thank you to Pam Ayers and all the students of Critchett's Lowry Organ Center for allowing us to come in and get a glimpse of your class. If this caught your interest and you'd like more information, you can give them a call at 319-266-5830. Now I'd like to welcome into uh, our studio our very own local barbershop quartet, Shop. Uh, I know usually there's four members to a quartet, uh, but today we have three members for the moment. Uh, your fourth is going to be joining us here in a few moments. But uh, first, would you guys uh, like to introduce yourselves? Absolutely, yeah. Um, I'm Austin Nolan, uh, I guess the tenor of the quartet. Yeah, uh, my name is Colby Campbell, I am the bass. Uh, and I'm Ben Owen, I'm the baritone. Awesome. Or as we love re lovingly refer to, the trash can of notes. <laughs> 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 so, uh, for anyone that may not know, uh, what is a barbershop quartet? A barbershop quartet is made up of four people. Um, historically, it's been men, um, and we sing a lot of pretty uh, stereotypical harmonies that um, are kind of uh, typical to barbershop harmony. It's kind of its own little genre. That's a lot. <laughs> okay. Um, <laughs> I'll you guys are thinking. So how's a barbershop quartet different from uh, other musical groups? Uh, what was it you guys were looking for when you were trying to come together as a group? Well, a barbershop quartet has a specific singing style and a specific set of harmonies um, that make barbershop barbershop, right? And uh, so we were looking for uh, guys who weren't afraid to sing out and be really independent, um, but not necessarily too much vibrato, you know what I mean? There's also a, a certain sense of humor or a certain uh, personality that has to come along with being in a barbershop quartet. You've got to be willing to kind of put yourself out there and uh, be uh, in a lot of awkward situations because um, that's just kind of the nature of the beast. We're really, really good at awkward. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> that's great. Um, how did you guys come to get to know each other then? Uh, how are you all connected that you found each other to come together? That's actually a really good story. Um, ben and I have a, a mutual friend, actually I believe your cousin. It's my second cousin. 
Okay, so the difference. So my <laughs> second cousin uh, went to my high school, um, and uh, so I knew her, and she was like, "Hey, uh, you guys are both going to UNI next year." Um, like my cousin wants to start a barbershop quartet. I know that's something that you've talked about, um, and so we kind of connected over Facebook even before we were students at UNI. Um, and then uh, we were both like, "We should do this. We should find a couple of guys once we get back, uh, once we get up to school." And um, and so we did. We just kind of met a couple other guys who were interested in singing and um, who you know fit into the group. And the rest is history. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, how long have you guys been performing together now? How long have you guys been shop? Shop has been around for what four, four years, years now. Four years. Oh my gosh, they're old. <laughs> yeah, but uh, the current group around two, two and a half years. Yeah, and I understand that there's more to shop uh, than just shop as your name. I believe that's an acronym. Uh, what's that all about? You want to answer that one? Yeah, please do. Well, which one do we say? Like the well, the official uh, one. The official one is the Super Hardcore Overtone Project but there have been many offshoots, <coughs> um, such as Superhuman Orange People, Sexy Housewives of Persia, can I say that on TV? I think you're good. Yeah. Okay, <laughs> we're good. Um, what are the other ones? What else do we have? Those are the two I always remember. Single hotties on pitch. On point. <laughs> on point. On point. Okay, yeah. So on lots point. of options, really, you can change it up for whatever situation you're in. Yeah. Perfect. Uh, so what kind of performances do you guys usually have? What kind of venues are you at? Uh, are you by request? Are there things you just tend to gravitate towards? Uh, that's really where you uh, kind of spin the roulette wheel with us as a quartet because we've performed uh, at a number of places and a number of venues and a number of situations. Um, anything from a pancreatic cancer vigil um, at the Riverloop Amph Amphitheater in Waterloo um, to a uh, high school uh, office. We've sang for some secretaries. Friends of the library. Friends of the library yeah. um, hired us at one point. Um, so that's really, uh, you know, we can be anywhere at any time. You never really know what to expect. Cool. Uh, <clears throat> why a barbershop quartet? What was it that drew you guys to it? I know you had an interest and you had an interest. Uh, why this particular genre? I, uh, I guess I inherited uh, an accordion file full of barbershop music from my father who had a quartet at UNI in the late 60s and early 70s. So I had this this large amount of music um, coming into college and so I contacted Colby. But um, we learned over time that barbershop is a pretty special uh, genre of music um, because it's so interactive with the audience. I mean, we're we're performing to the audience um, pretty blatantly and interacting with them as we sing. So it's a lot of fun uh, just to relate to the people that we're singing to in such an accessible way. What has been your uh, best moments performing? Uh, what stands out to you? Man, there's been so many. <laughs> <laughs> the, uh, I think the pancreatic cancer vigil takes the one for the most awkward. Mm -hmm. okay. um, we, we, the, the programmed part of that um, was really actually very nice. We sang a nice piece for that. Um, but then we did a little bit of uh, music beforehand that was, uh, didn't quite feel in place um, just as a barbershop quartet. That's but they, they, they asked for it, so yeah. uh, mm -hmm. we, we did it. Um, One of my favorite moments was um, we sold Austin uh, during our, one of our shows. Uh, we auctioned him off um, to, I think her name was Bobby, Bobby. and she yep. was about 65, and uh, she, she won a spaghetti dinner with Austin. How was yeah. that? Oh, it never happened. She went back to Arkansas, or uh, Arizona? Arizona, I think. Arizona. Oh, that's yeah. too bad. You really messed out. I know. She, yeah. She was a lovely lady. She came up on stage and we sang uh, to her. I think she was a barbershop herself at one point. I think so. Or she was very, she very was familiar with, with the genre, yeah. at least. She was really enthusiastic. <laughs> so. uh, and was that auction a part of your Valentine's concert last year? Yes. Mm -hmm. Did you sure. guys like to talk about that? I know we're kind of coming up on the anniversary of that. Um, and that Was that your first big concert you guys had put together? Yeah, it was our first solo show. Um, so. Uh, we'd done these performances throughout the years, performed in, uh, performed in several different shows um, until we, we were just like, hey, let's put together our own show. <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, 
So a year ago this weekend, uh, Valentine's Day, we had our own show at St. John's Lutheran Church here in Cedar Falls. Um, about an hour and a half of music, if I remember right. Around there. Um, and yeah, it was just a blast. Cool. Uh, what do you guys have coming up? What do you have <laughs> planned? Or with Valentine's Day, do you have any special plans for the holiday? Well, we have our singing <laughs> Valentine's uh, this weekend. Where, I mean, I can't divulge too much information because they're secret, they're top secret, but we'll be visiting some businesses and some schools and a lot of dorm rooms. <laughs> <laughs> cool. So you guys are available uh, to sing for people by request then? Absolutely. Yep. Cool. Yeah. How would they uh, get in touch with you if they wanted you to go around singing for them? Uh, we have a website. It's overtoneproject.com. Uh, and if they just want to request a singing Valentine, um, we're available at overtoneproject at gmail.com. Um, you just got to send us an email and be like, hey, I'd love a singing Valentine. We'll correspond from there. What's the best part of performing together? Uh, I think that just performing with these guys for the last several years, um, we've just grown so close as, you know, as friends. And it's, uh, we're kind of an unlikely um, group of guys, but uh, you know, especially just anything with music, but barbershop in particular, um, we just go through so much together, and I think that really brings us together as a, as an ensemble and as friends. It's really interesting too because um, <coughs> we're we're all pretty busy, but uh, it, ju it even just happened yesterday where we came in and into rehearsal and we're just kind of frustrated and stressed out, but by the end we're laughing at each other and singing and and making pretty good music, and. Uh, it's kind of like a vacation in the middle of the day. You guys have any uh, <laughs> plans moving forward? Uh, after this, I know you're in college. Uh, is this something you plan to do after college, or is this kind of your thing while you're in it? That's a question that's still up in the air as of right now. Okay. Uh, we, don't, we don't really know. Um, at this point, uh, it looks like um, in the near future anyway, what we might have to disband um, just for geographic reasons. You know, we're kind of going our separate ways uh, as college ends here. Um, but I think, I, I'm sure that we'll get together at some point in the future and continue to sing. Mm -hmm. um, and if not, you know, barbershop's something that we can carry with us uh, literally for the rest of our lives. Awesome. Well, I want to thank you gentlemen for your time here in our studio. Uh, folks, you're in for a really special treat here in a few minutes. Uh, Shop will be back performing right here in our studio, so we'll be right back. Hey, did you guys give Austin directions to the studio? Because we have to perform in like two minutes. Yeah, man. You did? Yeah. Okay, good. Well, where is he? Because we're supposed to be here like five minutes ago. Well, I, I gave it to them in Russian. Uh, Russian? Oh. Uh, does he? Oh. oh. Does he? Oh. Hi, Austin. Oh. Cupcake, what are you doing? Oh, what are you doing? Hi. Is right. this where we're rolling? Yeah, we're gonna, we're gonna, we're rolling. We're gonna. Oh, hey, okay. thanks for rushing here. Oh. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so what are we gonna sing, guys? Babyface. Babyface. Right, well, heart. Let's start with heart. Let's start with heart. Let's start with heart. Yeah. Wait. What's the first word? Heart. Heart. Heart of my heart. Okay. We're good. We're good. Wait, what pitch is that? A flat. A flat? Yeah. That was an A. That was an A flat. It's an A flat. It's an A flat. It's it's a flat. flat. Interesting. <laughs> okay. <coughs> heart of my heart, I love you. Wait, who are we singing to? The what? viewers. The what? Your mom. Or She's out TV. there? Yeah, your mom's your mom's out there. Hey mom. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> this time for Rios. <laughs> okay. Heart of my heart, I love you. Life would be not without you. Light of my life, my darling, I love you.
Let's do another. Let's do another. Let's do one what more. Is love? Baby, baby, baby. Baby. I say we do babyface. Babyface. Baby Who's baby? No. <laughs> this is part where you laugh. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. <laughs> I love that pretty baby face. I love your baby, baby face. face. I love your cute. You got the cutest little baby face. I know there's there's not another one could take your place. My loving baby, baby face. face. I know that my poor heart is jumping. You should have started something, baby face. I love you so. I'm up in heaven when I'm in your fond embrace. I didn't need. Cause I just fell in love with your pretty baby face Rosy cheeks and turned up nose and curly hair bum, 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 I'm raving about my baby now About my baby pretty little dimples here and dimples there Don't want to live without her I love her, goodness knows I wrote a song about her Cause I just fell in love with your pretty baby face. I didn't need no, I didn't a shove. Cause I just fell. Yes, I guess I fell in love with your pretty baby. Nice. That was awesome. Well, thank you so thank much. You very much Chris. Thank you very much to Shop and joining us uh, here in studio. Uh, that's all for this episode of the Arts Overlook. I hope you have a wonderful Valentine's Day. I'm Chris Bowden, and thank you for watching.